I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, video course on making sense of discipline. Probably the most pressing question in raising children. Uh, it, it's been always a pressing question. Uh, the Greeks wrote about this. Plato wrote about this. Uh, Socrates wrote about this. Uh, we had some major writing in the 17th century which is still actually influencing much of our practices today and I'll touch on those things but it still continues to be the most pressing uh, kind of question what do I do when what do I do when and uh, that's our version of this most ancient question and uh, this is exactly what I want to address. This question not only get asked by parents, by teachers, uh, but by principals, by uh, vice principals, supervisors of daycares, uh, directors of programs for children with problem behavior, and on and on and on. And always I get the question, can you give us a template? Uh, can you create some guidelines so, so that we can create an approach uh, whether it is in the family, whether it is in a program, whether it is in a school, uh, an approach to discipline policy. And I'm glad that there are those of you that are viewing this course that are not satisfied with one-minute answers, uh, that you are not satisfied with isolated strategies divorced from their philosophical moorings. Uh, that, uh, and we all know that when it comes to discipline, we can't always count on our instincts. Uh, they can quite lead us awry. And so I'm glad for the invitation uh, to do more than one-minute answers, uh, to be able to provide some depth to this, to provide some foundational knowledge. My own experience in the field of discipline is, is a very varied. Uh, problem kids in prison, uh, some of the most uh, uh, problematic kids in, ki in prison, I actually was dean of students at one time in a private college, and I had the discipline portfolio. And so I had both. I had some of the most well-behaved, but still sometimes running into problems, adolescents, and the poorest behaved. Uh, you know, and uh, of course, uh, uh, there has been a lifetime of parent consultation, of working with teachers. Uh, I was a parent consultant on a national television program one time. Uh, or for a period of years, and uh, so, and, and I'm a parent of five, a grandparent of three. The f the five are all adults, and so it uh, it's uh, more difficult now to spank them. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, talk about spanking! It was my own. It was my own minute of notoriety, so to speak. I was giving a presentation in a, a presentation, and I said, and I said. I didn't know there was a national journalist in the crowd. I said that some of today's practices could actually be more dangerous than spanking. And we'll actually get to this in session two. And uh, the next morning, it went across the headlines, not only in Canada, but United States and Europe. And I got calls everywhere, except the headlines were, you know, Vancouver psychologist advocates spanking, you know? <laughs> uh, that was the headlines. I can assure you that is not the case. Uh, that is not what we'll be talking about. Uh, and hopefully that doesn't come as a result from this course. Uh, but it does show you just how full of, uh, of uh, of, uh, well, w walking this area is like minefields, is that being able to say exactly what you want to say and being able to get the kind of understanding that I want to get. And that's why we need some time. And I thank you for that time that you're giving me in this course to, cry, to, uh, uh, to be able to lay those foundations, to talk about these things. So hopefully at the end of the course, it will inform the decisions, inform the philosophy, inform the approach to discipline, and inform the decisions about what to do when. So please fasten your seatbelts. I hope you enjoy the ride. It will be a fast-paced uh, three hours, I can assure you. Uh, much of the material that I discuss uh, is embedded elsewhere in the various courses that I have developed for parents, for teachers, for helping professionals. But in this course, I try to bring all the salient information, bring it together under one uh, cover, under one course, and address specifically the pressing question of, uh, of, of discipline and how do we go about it. I've subtitled it, 
the ins and outs of imposing order on children's behavior. And I hope you'll get by the end of the course the play on the language that I'm doing uh, here. Uh, but the ins and outs uh, of imposing order on children's behavior. We need to impose order on children's behavior. That is part of our responsibility as parents, as teachers, but how do we go about it? There are some good ways. There are some ways that are not so good that, uh, that we're engaging in uh, today and therefore the ins, ins and outs uh, of it. The overview. Uh, this is applicable. I'm trying to do this, and this is a real stretch, a real challenge. I'm trying to say it in such a way that you could apply the material equally to a toddler and to a teen. Now, they're very different creatures, but what I'm trying to do is distill it to the essence, and so when it gets to the essence, you can write your own uh, strategy, write your own prescription, taking that into consideration. So my job is to be able to inform the thinking, and so I'm going to try to do this. And I'm also, uh, I'm trying to do this so that it's applicable to every setting from residential homes, foster homes, group homes. Of course, the, the m most will be viewing this as parents in terms of uh, their own toddlers and preschoolers and school-age children and so on. Uh, the teachers will be looking for classroom management uh, suggestions. Uh, vice principals will be looking for, who are often in charge of the discipline portfolio, for approach to the school and approach to this. And so what I'm hoping to do is, is to cover that. That's a broad spectrum, uh, but that is my hope that I can distill it enough to the essence so that it becomes universal in its application. Because if we get it to the essence, if we get to what are the truths here, what are the things we must take into consideration, then we can open it up uh, to apply uh, across venues. The approach, the approach is from an attachment, uh, an attachment-based developmental perspective. Now, this is very important here. This is what I am. I'm a development. I'm a developmentalist. A uh, developmentalist, the key question is what it's about children realizing their full potential as human beings and about what gets in the way. That's what a developmentalist stands for. That's how they think. Uh, so the key issue is not how to get children to behave. The key issue is how can children realize their full potential as a human being? And that question must never, ever uh, be, uh, we must never leave that question because that question informs everything. L let me explain. You know, we can ask the question, you know, what, uh, uh, what is there to eat? Oh, there's lots to eat. There's lots to eat. You might find a lot to eat in your fridge, you know, the store, a lot to eat. But, but what is there to eat that is good for me? <laughs> Now it limits the choices. And that's the problem we have here. People say, well, what, how can I control the behavior of a child? What discipline works? There's lots of methods that work. There's lots of methods that work for some of the children some of the time. But how can I impose order so it does not jeopardize the healthy development of a child, what a child requires to be able to realize their full potential. That's the question of this course. That's a different question. And so it's not only what to do when, it's what to do when so that it is good for the child, good for the conditions that are required to be conducive to raising the child. That's a more limiting question, and unfortunately very few people are asking it. I get so frustrated with the literature, so frustrated with, uh, with uh, the TV programs, uh, with Dr. Phil, with the nanny program, so frustrated uh, with much of the material from so-called experts because they do not take that question into consideration. And they ought to. Anybody who is addressing this question should realize that it has to be done within the context of a larger question. Uh, and, and so it is more complex than it would appear. 
therefore the need for at least three hours to be able to address this. And so because one has to look at this question within the context of a larger development. Unfortunately, practices have evolved that have responded to the consumer's need for one-minute answers, for instant fixes, to be able to control behavior without weighing the cost. Unfortunately, there are no warning labels on popular approaches to discipline, not like food. On food, you know, you can say, well, you know, what is good for me? And it gives you this whole list, you know, inside the food, and you can read it. And I think all the popular discipline approaches today should come with warnings. You know, there are side effects. This may work very well to control the behavior of the child, but it isn't necessarily good for your child. And don't be surprised if there are repercussions. And so we'll be looking at, at some of this.